Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here. So today we're going to be doing the drum brakes on a Chevy Cobalt 2007. Um, so, first thing you're going to want to do is before you get to this stage, as you can see I already have this car lifted up. The reason why is because I've done so many uh, tutorials on how to jack your car up. Um, I either post an annotation right about here, or you're going to see, or you can always find it on my channel if you click on the Ghostly Rich under the video, and then type in channel search and just type in spare tire removal but I'll try and I'll try and put the annotation here anyways so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is before you jack your car up is you're gonna wanna loosen the bolts well it's on the ground and the reason why is because some of these can be torqued up pretty high so when this is down on the ground you're gonna torque these bolts off pretty loose and then you're going to jack your car up and then at this point with them still on you're just gonna be pulling these off now when you pull off the uh, our wheel lugs here it's going to the whole rim is going to be coming off so be careful try to do the bottoms first that's what I like to do like rotate it right about here hold it and then we'll just take this off like so and as you can see it pop forwards like that and these can be pretty heavy so now you're just gonna lift it off now what's really cool is if you're doing this, this is also a good way to check and see if you even need to do your brakes. So the next thing you're going to want to do is we're going to have to pry this away a little bit. We usually use the claw of a hammer. You could also use a breaker bar, whatever the hell you want to use. But it's just, you just got to pry it a little bit away while being careful. As you can see, you might have to knock it a bit. It just depends how long it's been since the last time you removed the cover. Once you get it off, we can check our pads. Now these still have a bit of meat on them, but since the other side was actually ground off uh, pretty low, we're actually going to be replacing these with new ones. So if you take a look at this and you can see the meat right here, there's still a bit on here, but if yours is ground down pretty low, then you're going to, that's your sure sign to uh, be doing this. And you can see it's pretty dirty in here. So we're going to be cleaning a lot with uh, some brake clean. So two things you're going to want to make sure you have if you're doing this. Um, and these are the major fluids that you'll have to pick up when you pick up your brakes. You're going to want to make sure you have the new, of course, brakes. You're going to make sure you have some brake cleaner and you're going to want some brake lube. And the reason why you want the lube is otherwise you get that squealing noise from brand new brakes, which you don't want. You want to make sure everything's well lubricated, okay? So, from this point, now we're going to disassemble. First, if I were you and you have a smartphone, like most of us do, clean a little bit of this off, take a picture of how the whole assembly works, or looks, not works, but looks. And the reason why, that way you have a good picture of how things are going to work. Now, I'm going to quickly vacuum clean this up and clean this up a bit, and then we're going to pop and break this all apart. Okay? Stay tuned. So, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to disassemble all this. And it's always about the starting point. I like to try and remove this spring first, so that way we can take out the portion right here first just so you have nothing that's going to fling at you when you do the next portion so now you can see this is pretty after you remove that spring this is everything in here is pretty loose so our next thing that we might want to do here is we're going to we can just leave those parts together pretty much and we could just pop this clip out right here you just wind it off again okay take the pressure off all right, so we're just taking a bit of pressure off here. That's another thing you're going to notice that there's a gear part. That's going to be more used when uh, we show you the next portion. Again, another way of doing it is just grabbing right here. And you're going to notice that this whole thing, when we pull it, everything's going to drop out. Just like that. That's just one big giant, uh, what we call the W bolt, because you're going to see it's in the shape of a W. And then once you get that out, you'll see this comes right out, and that's our W. And then all this right here is just sitting there. And this is just connected to our brake line. Now for pulling this part off, all you have to do is twist a little bit. And you'll see that it comes out in a sec. Um, again, you could use pliers to try and pull back the spring a little bit or a good pair of channel locks. You just gotta basically pull back on the uh, cord a little bit to release the tension, because that's your brake cable and uh, you just got to try and wrap it around because we just need to get it out. As you can see, it can be a little bit catchy, but that's the fun part. You'll see that when we start uh, doing the next portion. So now that everything's out, those are your old pads. You can just pretty much get rid of those. And the next thing you're going to want to do is clean everything with your brake clean. Just don't, you know, just you're going to shoot like in here. All you're going to do is just spray it up inside there. Just 
like I said, soak it. And once you do that, next you're gonna do is grab yourself a rag, don't use your good stuff, use some old towels. <laughs> because after this you're probably never going to want to use it again well you'll use it on your other car projects but you ain't going to be using it in the house so the next thing is just wiping everything so we're going to wipe up all these parts that's what you should do get it cleaned if you're OCD then this will be really fun for you <laughs> anyways so stay tuned for the next section alright so the next thing you're going to be doing is we've got to lube everything up we've cleaned everything as you can see and we've disassembled or unscrewed this pin which you will see is together in this it, which has the gear on it and we've put lube on there so that way it'll twist in and out very easily so it makes it e much easier for when adjusting because you're going to see that's uh, another fun part because everything from here is actually really fun uh, the next thing you're going to be doing is some tag points you'll see some areas where you have bumps where your pads might rest against and you're going to want to grease those up a little bit you can see there's one point here there'll be one point here and one point there. There's six points all the way around the dish and we like to grease those up just to make sure you don't get any squeaking or rubbing and stuff like that. Now the problem that you're gonna face is you do not want to cover this entire plate. I've seen guys try and do that. The problem is if you try to cover the entire plate with grease or you over grease it what will happen is it'll start to cling all the dust on there and it makes it one goopy mess which you don't really want for the next person. You could. I don't know if you're that kind of person but <laughs> after you do that uh, like I said, you just lube the threads or you lube this point up. You're going to pop that together like so. That little metal flange, or flangey, there you go, uh, is just going to go onto here. And then into the other end. And then on the back of the gear, you're just going to tie this in uh, to a point that you think is good. If you tie it in about four threads from the end, it's a good starter point. You can always go down lower. You'll see where you have to slip it into after this. Because from now on, we're going to be reassembling it. So once you've lube these up nicely. You might want to throw some uh, more lube on different uh, locations like the hinges. Some people like to try and lube the hinge. It's all up to you again. So from this point we're going to be reassembling. Now this is the fun part of the reassembly. You have to get this hook that's right here between the spring and the end ball. So good way to do this is uh, by taking a pair of needle nose pliers. These ones are kind of tiny. Uh, and you just have to create an opening like so. Once you have that opening, which you can sort of see, well, he doesn't have it open right now, but when you get the opening a little bit, as you can see, it's going to be difficult. And I'm just showing you this portion because then you know just how difficult this part can be. All right, guys, so we got it in. This is definitely going to be a very difficult thing for you to do, possibly. Uh, I was actually able to do it really easy on the other side, but this side was a little bit more tougher. Um, what you're going to need is a pair of channel locks like so. And one, you're going to need two sets of hands probably because it makes it so much easier. One person grabs right here. One person grabs the spring like so. And then you have to work that hook in. When you squeeze it, you'll get a space down there. Once you get that space, you put the hook in. Uh, or you're going to have to twist it in, which I'll show you on your other brake pad. You'll notice it has a little bit of a nub on it. And getting it around that nub is a little bit difficult. Uh, by little I mean if you don't have two people it's going to be a fun adventure for you. So once you get, uh, like I said, you just squeeze right here. Once you get it around that barb and then it hooks in, it'll look like so. And how you know you have it in the right way is look at the way the hook is for us. If you take your brake pad now and you twist it like so, so it fits in just like so, you know you have it on the right way. And of course, as you can see, that's where this nub is going to sit, is inside right here or you'll see there's a groove for it and now we've got this the W bracket and this is another fun part uh, where you're gonna have to line up the W bracket where one part goes in to this hole over here and there's also a groove around the bottom which is going to hold in right there. Alright guys so if you go in here I'm gonna see if I can show you see how there's a hook in there that's where the W is going to hook on to. You bring the W up and you rest it on the inside. It goes between the spring, as you can see, and the hook. Once it's over that hook and down, so it's just resting there, then you bring your pad up here, line it up on the piston like so, and then once it's on there, then you just uh, hook it on this one side. Now, 
I, what I like to do is you hook it and then you lift it up and onto the hook right there. And once it's on the hook, now this side gets a little bit easier because you just have to uh, lift this up a tiny bit. Uh, first line it up so you know it's gonna go right here. And of course, you can always adjust this a tiny bit if it's gonna be a little bit difficult. and I'll hold it like so. Like I said, brakes are always nice if you have two hands just because there's, well, a lot of parts that are just, uh, can quickly release. So, as you can see, you're lifting that other side and you've got to line it up into that hole. So, we've got that lined up on there. Perfect, and now we can lift that onto there. Boom. So, as you can see, that's in there. Our hook's inside the hole now and that's resting down there where it should be down here. And now we're just gonna go over it, make sure everything's over, and then we'll be, I'll show you the last portion, which is right here for the parking brake. So stay tuned for that. All right, so our next part is, as you can see, we're going to be putting it in this groove right here and this groove right here. You'll see the short stem here and the deeper stem. So we have to put that, this stem in there and this wider stem right here and as you can see we've got it down and now it's the fun part of working it in so that's in there and then that comes out like that and then now see that gear you're just gonna wind it until it closes enough and closes itself inside here so next thing like I said and we're turning it if you're looking at it counterclockwise all right so now that that's nice and in there, the next thing we have to do is this little hanger bracket. You're going to have to put the, the smaller portion of the hook onto there. And that's going to go like this. See how it goes on that nub? So it goes on the nub. This goes like so. And it's going to be in there. Now we've got our spring. It hooks up into the caliper like so. Now we grab ourselves a pair of pliers again, something grippy and see that hook right there, just like so. Oh, you let go of the nub. oh sorry. <laughs> it came off of the nub right here, so we're just going to do attempt number two. So, there, oh. Again, can be fun, because as you can see, it's resting uh, against there, so you have to pinch it between our metal piece there and there. Yeah, it's just catching a little bit right there. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, you get the, the gist of it. You're basically trying to get that circle onto here and it'll hold the hanger in. Once you get it in, it's good. As you can see, this is another fun part. Spring's always over. Yeah. squeezing it in there now oh perfect yeah that's good so as you can see it's on the nub this is the fun part it's hooked on here now we're just gonna go through and make sure all the adjustments now if you're wondering well, what the hell does this do anyway well it goes right there hinges on here and then it holds the gears so that way it stops the gear from twisting itself out so your brake pads don't loosen all right or well, as I should say, your brake drums for the rear. So, from this point, we're just going to be um, testing. testing it all out. What you do is you put this on, your drum cover. <laughs> and you just gotta line it up with your bolt pattern, which this one's kinda easy, it's just four bolts. And as you can see, this is where you notice that, hey, hey, it's not going to work here, or that it needs to go a little bit more to this side, a little bit more to that side, so you can put it on properly. As you can see, we're like, okay, doesn't quite fit on the bolts over here, so bring it down a little bit on this area, down a little bit on the next. The best is you're just trying to make it in there. The 
so all right tight. so stay tuned we're just going to be adjusting again that's what that hanger is for and as you can see now we're going to adjust it a little bit so they aren't spread out so wide so it'll fit better So you do have to lift it away, like if you take a look what he's doing with his finger, he's lifting it away so that way it doesn't jam the gears. And then ju we just use a flat blade on the gears. Don't grind the gears because that sucks. Uh, and then now we're just going to again see how the fitment is. And now that you know how to adjust, just do what we just did. Just continuously adjust and we're going to fine tune this a little bit. Alright, so stay tuned. Okay, so we got to this part, and uh, we've noticed that once you get the cover on, you'll notice that there's still a little bit of resistance, like a little more than what we want. Um, so the good thing is, is we felt the resistance beforehand, and then now, if your pads are low, of course, you're going to have a little more resistance this time. As you can see, we're going to pop this off, though, because there's a little bit more resistance than what we want. And we're going to keep adjusting that gear until we're satisfied with the resistance that we want. We want it so it's still, you know, it's it still has that resistance, but we also want it so it's not rubbing the pads constantly. Like you see the resistance difference already. See how it actually spins now? That's what we want. And then of course, how you make sure that your brakes are actually going to engage is you get someone to hop inside, press the brake pedal, and try and turn it, and then just make sure it's touching. So. Again, this is another thing that you're going to have to uh, adjust depending on the feel and stuff like that. All right, so from this point, what we're going to be doing is throwing the tire back on and we're going to um, put the bolts back on. So I'll let you guys do that portion and then stay tuned, we're going to do the front. All right, guys, so just like we did in the back, we're going to be removing the rim again. So we're just going to remove these four bolts and then, like I said, it's always best to take off the two side ones and then the bottom one, so that way when you pull this one off, you can just lift the tire off. Otherwise, if you go for the bottom one, sometimes the whole thing will just fall right off. And it's annoying. Just like that. See, now you can hold it up here, like so, so that way it just tilts a little bit forwards and doesn't fall at you, because that sucks. You usually usually it won't but it's always a precautionary thing and then um, the next thing we're going to be doing is once you get to this point we're going to be popping off these two slider bolts in the back once we pop those off which we're going to check that right here so that way it can give you a size here 14 mil and the 14 mil is just going to go on the back here and we're going to be just righty tighty lefty loosey on those ones Oh, and before we do that, sorry, the next thing you want to do is back off the piston. So, if you see here, what we're doing is we're basically putting pressure, pushing the piston back so that way you're going to have room to do this properly. <laughs> As you can see, this piston's being a little bit troublesome. But isn't all little stuff like this, like that. So, as you can see, we got lots of crud falling out. This is just all road grime and stuff. Um, and of course, like what I seen on the other side, we had actually some cracked brake pad going on. And that's never good. So, from now, as you can see, we've got more uh, slack in there. We're just double checking. Alright, that should be about good there. Cool. So the next thing you're going to do is we got our 14 mil. We're going to loosen these two slider bolts. Almost there. I 
And as you can see now, we've got it all off and we're going to be just removing our pads. Once you actually have this off, it's not too bad, but we at least get to see our pads now. Look at that. There is no, I mean absolutely no meat left on these pads. If you want to take a look at what a full one looks like, look at that meat and then take a look at that. <laughs> Again, uh, another quick note for you, you'll have to change the fronts all basically twice before you ever have to touch those rears again, so you only have to go through that hell every almost, I don't know, 60,000 miles probably on the back, and then on the front, you usually want to check them every 30, or at 30, and then see how your lifespan is. These, um, we just ended up grabbing this car this past year, and uh, we just notice that the squealers were going on the brakes. As you can see, this is a squealer here. And if it starts, you'll hear it start squealing when your brakes get way too low, and you can see the squealer is pretty well ground down. But anyways, so from this point, it's just uh, from here, you're going to want to clean this all up and take these edge pieces off. As you can see, these are the old ones, and in the new packet, they'll give you the new ones. What's cool is if when you get four pads and four of these... Uh, the sliders, these are actually um, uh, all the exact same, so you don't have to worry about messing them up. So, as you can see here, we're just going to be placing these on, and then the next one goes on. And you can see the bumps just squeeze onto each other. That squeezes there, then the grip squeezes on there, oh, and then it's just working it in so they're sitting nice and flush and not giving you a whole lot of grief. So you can see that one at the top, we're going to work around that one a little bit, but other than that, um, there we go, that should be better right there, perfect. So now with your new stuff that you're going to be putting in right here, you're going to want to lube these up a little bit with that. Uh, ultra slick right there you're gonna lube up these then you're gonna to go to your pad here and you're gonna lube up the edge around here get a lot on there and a lot on here and then you're gonna lube the back of the whole pad and on the back of this one do the exact same thing back a pad all the way around the edge all the way around the edge so that way the pad slides freely that way you don't have to worry about it catching and then squealing and stuff like that now the other thing you're gonna to want to do is put your squealer on. You can see a little indent right here and it goes like this. How you know which way it goes is like I showed you on the other one. Um, that little stem, I'll show you here in a sec. See how it only, well it only squeeze on one way but see how this goes right here because that's what's gonna rub when it starts. It's not the ho this whole hook piece. The whole hook piece goes on the back here and this is the part that's actually gonna rub and squeal. So. At this point, we're going to just lube these up, so stay tuned, and I'll show you what it looks like when we put it together. Alright guys, so right now we're slipping the uh, pad into the grooves, as you can see. You can see the little groove from which the little tabs fit into. When it goes like that, you can see we've put a lot of grease on the back end, so that way we don't get the squeal. And then it slips on, both pads slip in the exact same way, because it's the same pad for uh, both sides of this. There's no difference in them. So, once you uh, slip them on, as you can see here, the next fun part is we're going to uh, check these sliders. And as you can see, these are moving freely. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, if you notice that it's crunchy or just something's not right, you might need to either change the boot, and it's always good to check the boot. The see how ours has no cracks or anything? So we're good. And the grease in there, I already popped one of these off, and the grease is still way fine. So. I mean, like I said, unless you feel crunchiness or stuff, you can always leave those alone. And if the boots rip, that's the only time you want to, of course, get in there. So, as you can see, it slips right on like so. Sometimes it's not that this easy. Sometimes it can be very difficult. Um, and what we're going to do from now on is just put the uh, two 14 mils in. And from there, we'll tighten it up. And uh, after we tighten up the... Uh, 14 mils it's time to of course check our brakes make sure our brakes are actually pinching and uh, so yeah I mean from this point 
you can always, of course, make sure you've lubed everything. You're just gonna tighten everything up. And then, of course, after you tighten these bolts up right here, just, uh, well, it's simple. Just put your rim back on. And then it's time for testing your brakes. Now, when you're testing your brakes, make sure that you're in a lot where there's no people around. And, well, you don't really have a choice if you're backing up. But put her into reverse, go very, very slow, and have your hand ready for the handbrake if you need to rip on that, so that way the back locks up. And you're just going to slowly uh, go a little faster each time and check your brakes and make sure it's it's giving you a good stopping distance. If you notice that there's anything wrong, automatically, you know, get the car to your shop and check it out. Um, when it comes to brakes, if you, now that you've seen this process, I wanted to show as much as I could of how difficult it can be. Um, if you are having problems with it and you don't think there's something going right, I would definitely bring it to a professional. You don't want to mess with brakes. It's not like an engine where you can just quickly, you know, chain, or if it fails, it fails, right? Um, when it comes to brakes, if they fail, you're in trouble very quickly. So, and you put a lot of other people at danger. Other than that, I hope this video helped you out. Thanks again for watching. Press the like button if it helped you out. And of course, press the subscribe to see more things I've done with this car, like the spark plugs, the um, cabin air filter, and other little things. Who knows? Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys, and have a great day.